Well, good evening, everybody. So a few months ago, I reviewed the Bopka Mini Golf Cart Battery, which would be a drop-in replacement for lead-acid batteries, but in a super small form factor. But I didn't have a cart to install the battery in. Well, a friend of mine was actually just getting ready to look for a conversion kit for his club car golf cart. So I ended up giving him this battery, and he went through and documented his installation, wrote down notes and shared them with me for his pros, his cons, and I want to share those with you tonight. So let's take a look and see how Don likes the Bobka golf cart battery. So Don and his family have been living off grid for quite some time now, and they rely on their club car for getting them around their property for various chores. And so he went through and he wrote out a nice long, basically a review of his procedure. And so I'm going to go through and read you what he wrote to me. So the battery conversion kit is from Bobka, and it's designed for replacing any golf cart or similar electric application. The battery is a self-contained metal case which can be held in place by many methods, both permanent bolting and temporary with bungees, belts, and other temporary methods. Removing the old batteries was really a 20-minute process, with the most difficult being the weight of six Crown 8-volt batteries. The plus side is that the Bobka replacement is less than 100 pounds compared to the crown lead acid. The vehicle weight was reduced by a performance enhancing 300 pounds. The chosen method was to bolt the battery in place as a particular application is used on a farm with rough, bumpy, and wet places, which end up causing a lot of vibration. The battery needs to be stable in order to prevent damage. The battery compartment and connections are under the driver's seat, it was decided to place the battery under the driver's side and the charger that comes with the battery under the passenger side. This was in part due to the previously installed solar charging equipment. Uh, he had an afterthought, though, was to reverse that installation to put the battery on the passenger side and the charger on the driver's side so that there'd be an even a more even weight distribution. This first image is the final install showing positioning of the battery and the charger. The charger is mounted on a plywood board covered with metal flashing underneath the charger contact points. This is for heat protection when charging from the 110 volt sources. This next image shows the Bobka Supply display monitor that was installed. It is in view for both the driver and the passenger. The monitor has three pages available and shows a lot of information about the battery status. The same information is available by using the Bluetooth link to a smart device. The on-off button is a bit awkward to depress and was found to require holding the back of the display in your fingers while pinching the button with your thumb. It often takes several tries to get the button to engage and to turn the monitor on. The monitor is not available when the battery is turned off. However, the Bluetooth link is still live. An annoying feature, likely designed to save battery power, turns the monitor off after a few minutes of standby use. This requires turning the monitor back on, which over time will likely cause the on and off button to fail from overuse. It does stay on while charging to observe current history. The monitor is touch sensitive to change pages. Depressing the power button also advances the pages when a cold hard touch is needed. The available power fuel gauge of the monitor is large and easy to read. The other functions seem easy to view using the Bluetooth smart device link. Now a rough installation description. Use your own safety and protection protocol when handling and wiring this product. This in install includes solar panels and a charging station input through a secondary charge control device. The same style and function as used with the Crown Lead Acid batteries, but with a lithium voltage protocol. There are two groups of solar panels attached. 
The design of this battery as a potentially portable power supply uses a master button to turn the battery on and off. This disconnects the power output on the positive and negative main posts. Now, if you're using this with an additional solar charging controller, you need to pay attention and care needs to be taken, including a user change of habit to prevent destroying any attached solar charge controller devices. For this application of the Bobka battery switch, which includes an automatic standby self turnoff function when the battery's not in use, thinking, you know, kind of overnight when the sun's not actively charging with solar. This could cause a potential catastrophic end to the charge controller between the batteries and the solar panels. Solar charge controllers nearly all require live power on the battery side 100% of the time before attaching the solar panels. When the Bobka battery enters self-shutdown or is turned off, there's no power available at the positive and negative main power leads. This effectively disconnects the solar charge controller. If solar panels are connected, when the sun begins charging the next day and the battery is in an off mode, no charging can occur and many charge controllers self-destruct without power being live on the battery side of the device. The user change of habit implemented is to leave the charge controller connected to the battery. Anderson connectors are on the solar side and these are disconnected before, yes, before turning the battery off. While this does work, it's not automatic. When the user interface, the human, forgets to disconnect the solar side, a failure will occur. Other lithium batteries are live at the posts and are likely better for this particular application if solar charging directly from the panels. The battery was placed in position under the driver's side using a long bit adapter to squeeze between the club car housing and the Bobka battery. Two pilot holes were drilled into the bottom of the battery box using the mounting holes as a guide. The holes can be seen where the light from under shines through. The battery was moved out of the way to enlarge in the holes. Mounting bolts were tested in the holes and a piece of scrap aluminum stock was cut and drilled to match the mounting hole. This aluminum stock was mounted under the battery box to reinforce the box and prevent the bolts from ripping through with use. And here in these pictures, you can kind of see the rough steps of drilling the holes through, running some all thread through and then going down into that aluminum stock. Long galvanized carriage bolts were used and after install, the excess was cut off to shorten the bolts. This was required as the space between the battery and the housing was too small for shorter bolts to easily fit. He, he notes that that was a user issue. With the first two bolts installed, drilling the opposite battery post side was easier as space for tools was available. The bolt facing the front end of the cart was drilled through the connect connecting main aluminum I-beam. The bolt on the rear side of the cart had a gap, so a small piece of wood was sanded to fit and used as a washer between the battery metal housing and the club car box. Large fender washers were used to distribute the pressure. And the Bobka battery box mounting holes fit between the brake lines and other important club car frame and body points. Mounting the charger took advantage of the open space emptied by removing the batteries. This will help with cooling when the charger is used. The plywood piece was rough cut to fit and the appropriate holes drilled to mount. Self-tapping metal screws were carefully drilled into the ABS housing of the club car box. There were some holes for mounting the crown lead acid batteries to prevent movement that were plugged with foam pieces from the Bobka battery shipping box. These holes were plugged to prevent water, mud, and debris from collecting underneath the charger and causing potential rot of the plywood. He recommends to foam the plugs with recy the recycled packing material before installing the plywood. Drain holes will be left in place as they were small. Before final bolting of everything, the club car battery area was vacuumed and wiped for excess dust and dirt. The last step involved mounting the monitor housing and routing the cable to connect it to the battery. Removing the two bolts holding the floorboard and mat trimming the passenger entry allows access to the channel used for club car controls. It's easy to access when the circled bolts are removed. 
The wiring channel required a hole in the battery box to be drilled in the front. No need to remove the trim strip, only remove the bolt circled and slide the floor mat back and fold it out of the way. And here he's got circled on the left, the connection to the battery. And then the circle on the right is where he drilled the hole through the battery box to the channel. Overall, the installation was not difficult. The time was about four hours over a couple of days. Many could likely do this faster, but care was taken to go forward slow to avoid errors. Overall, Bobka has designed a good replacement for standard lead acid batteries. The installation is pretty easy for most people accustomed to changing auto batteries. Those not used to working with batteries might be smarter paying to have this work done. Due to the nature of the battery casing, you could do this installation by using temporary straps, foil cushions, and other methods to hold the battery in place while driving if used on a golf course or paved roads. You know, kind of thinking no bumps, no, no room for the battery to move around. It appears the battery is designed to charge full and then deep cycle with use and then recharge. The 110 volt supplied charger should likely be disconnected from your source when the battery is full and should not be left on without indirect supervision. Performance of this club car improved significantly after the install due to the lower weight and lithium power drain advantage. Climbing the small hills on the farm did not have the dragging, dogging down of speed near the top of the hill as with the heavy crown lead acid batteries. The only other negative is communication with Bobka seems to be a one-way street. Several notes to the company for clarification of this particular install met with absolutely zero responses. While it's understandable spring is the busy battery time for the golf cart industry, there was not even an auto reply of receiving questions. Other than the negatives that I've described, I would recommend this battery. And then he goes ahead and says, thank you, Adam. So thank you, Don, for sending that over to me. I do appreciate you going through and taking the time to document your installation, your pros and cons, and even talking about some of those friction points that you ran into. Uh, I have actually heard of a couple of instances where communication seems to be somewhat lacking from Bobka. Now, with the cost of this battery, can you get away with poor communication because you're saving some more money? That's only a question that you can answer as the purchaser. But Don's been using that Bobka battery in his club car for the last several months. And other than what I read to you, he hasn't mentioned any other problems that he's had. And I know that that club car is going to get even more and more use now that it's starting to get nice outside and chores seem to tend to change on the farm when you transition from winter into summertime. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully it helps answer some questions for anybody looking to do a Bobka battery conversion on your club car. I'll put in the description below links to the battery. I'll also add links to my review video that I did on this battery. It really does seem to be about half the size of some of these other golf cart batteries that we've looked at. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.